Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another video. Today we have progress one of one of our client builds that we are doing now. This is Project Cognition. I hope you all enjoy this project. Remember, we've got lots of custom pieces on the channel as well. So after this video, definitely check out more and definitely don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. You can see we're using one of our new toys at the moment. We have the laser machine fired up, doing a bit of engraving into the acrylic and also cutting out some cog wheels for the design that we are after. Now the client did specify black, red and gold. So I'm going to make some gold cogwheels. I'm going to paint the fittings gold. Have little gold accents here and there. And obviously now that the case is black, we have a lot of black already incorporated into the build. So it's time to add that red into there as well. So that part that you saw me etching out first is actually going to be the front panel window. Now the good thing about etching is it picks up light really easy. So when we use our RGB fans behind it, it's going to look really nice, especially at night when the PC will be glowing a lot more and all of the light will be accentuated because of the darkness surrounding it. So we're using our grinder just to cut out that front section to create that window and, and we're getting our Dremel in there just to get the rest of the steel cut through so we can file it down and make it nice and smooth. So we used our Dremel as well just to get rid of all of those other rougher bits that the file could not get rid of and this is how it turned out. The frame looks nice. We've got about a one centimeter border all the way around it. So it leaves plenty of room for us to screw the thing down. And we also left the border as well. So we have a room to do a nice black border to hide all of those cuts underneath. It's pretty simple. And at the moment, what we're doing is we're actually measuring out where to drill our holes so they're nice and aligned and it looks nice and neat. So we're going to be doing some wet sanding. First thing, we need to wet this thing up, keep it nice and wet, nice and moist. And we're going to be using some 2000 grit sandpaper, nice and smooth, just to get rid of that surface so we can give it a spray paint over. I went over the other panels with the black as well, so all of the panels matched. Now we're working on the side piece, just cutting out some 3mm thick acrylic using my plastic cutting jigsaw blade. A lot of you guys ask about my jigsaw blades. It is metal, but it is meant for cutting plastic. We're also going around the edges, smoothing that out, getting rid of all those jigsaw blade marks using a bit of sandpaper. Now for the second side panel, I thought I'd be a bit inventive here and actually use the side panel that I used to cut out the cog wheels from and keep that shape going throughout the whole build. So I've cut that out and that's going to be on the left side panel. Now that I've painted the outside of the framework, I've got the black framework along our window now, and that looks really nice once we peel back all of that section. Now I'm going to be doing some vinyl work, guys. A awesome circuit board design, which will be going onto the panels, and that will be showing through red in the end. So do not mind the color, guys. It will not be staying blue in the end. It'll all be red. Peeling back all of that protective film so we can stick down our vinyl on both of these panels. Bit of paintwork on the back. So this is the red that will be showing through. No need for prime because there is prime built into this and this paint actually sticks to acrylic wheel really well. It's also got a really nice smooth finish. There's no orange peel at all. It looks fantastic. British Paints is the brand if you guys are interested. So what I've done here is I've peeled the top section of the protective film off. The back has been painted with three coats of paint and now I am putting my vinyl on the top and then patting it down so there's no air bubbles underneath the vinyl. If there is air bubbles, the paint will seep through and your job will look very messy. So take time patting that all the way down, making sure it's nice and firmly applied to the acrylic. Our separate section, we have a different design going onto this one. Still all the same sort of circuitry theme that we're going for here, but we wanted to change the design up so it's not looking all the same. So I'm just cutting off the excess parts around the outside, making sure that none of it's overhanging, and we slowly peel off our film to reveal the vinyl underneath.
Then we just go around and we fill in all the blank spaces. So now that it is all packed down nice and firm, it is time to go over with our black. Taking our time, very, very light coats, guys. You don't want to go too overboard because then the paint will pull up and that'll also look for gaps in the vinyl as well as it has nowhere else to go. So I've just gone around the edges making sure I coat them and we're going over with our third coat making sure that it's nice and evenly spread out. Now that that is all painted, we can remove all of the film from our cogwheels that we printed out earlier on in the video. Very delicate process, but do take your time. And then we are going to be joining our cogwheels together. We've got some acrylic weld solution, which can simply be applied using that bottle with a really thin needle top which can push all of that acrylic weld solution down into the gaps. Now that they're all joined, a bit of prime for undercoat, and then we will be going over with our gold paint. Nice light coats over the top. Now this is a very, very, very heavy gold, so what we're gonna be doing is afterwards, once we've done our three coats, we're gonna be trying to sort of rough it up a bit, make it look a bit more rustic, a bit more weathered, so that it looks more like a cogwheel, and trying to grease up all those edges. Now that our three coats of paint has dried, it's time to take our time, peel back all of that vinyl to reveal the red pattern underneath. Now a lot of people don't realize what I do with vinyl and they get concerned when they see the blue on there and it just doesn't look like it's going with the theme. But fear not guys, you guys know I always peel it back to reveal the color underneath. So, time to get our CPU installed on the motherboard. We are using an Asus motherboard, as you can see right here. Taking it out of the box, looks absolutely brilliant. It's going to perform very well. It's one of the higher-end motherboards as well. And we're going to be using an EK Waterblocks CPU on this. Now, one thing that we do have to do is we have to replace the Intel bracket with the AMD bracket. So, we push that down nice and firm until we hear a click. Then we just simply put that copper base back on and screw it back in place nice and tight so that it is nice and watertight. Now that we have that plate back on, we need to unscrew the stock plates which come on the motherboard and then install our own plates. We are going to be using a Ryzen CPU in this build, which will perform really well. It's got lots of cores and it'll be good for gaming. So his video editing and rendering and gaming shouldn't be a problem at all. Bit of thermal paste on there and then we install the bracket for the CPU. And of course peeling off the back of that CPU so we have some nice contact with that thermal paste. The springs help to keep it in place nice and tight while we do these bolts up. Now it's time to install the graphics card water block. Onto our graphics card, the Asus GTX 1080 Ti Strix. We have two of them going into the build using a bit of rubbing alcohol to remove that stock thermal paste and then of course removing the stock cooler as well as all of the stock thermal pads that come with it. Time to install our own thermal pads, getting all of those onto all of the vital components, and then of course we install our water block. Now I went with the clear plexi because I plan on installing some LEDs just to make everything glow a lot more because he did specify he wanted some RGB in this build as well. Now it's time to make these cogwheels look a bit weathered. We're going for a browny red colour and of course some black in there to make it a bit darker. Then we'll go for a more earth brown add that in there and then a bit more black to make that a lot darker a bit of thinners in there just to try and bind it all together and then of course we go around the edges flicking our paintbrush on there we don't want to cover too much because we don't want it to look too overwhelming it's just meant to look like a bit of grease a bit of grime around the cog wheels just to give it a nice aged effect
time to take out all of the stock things in the case, such as the fans. We got one fan undone, and then there is two fans in the front, which also have to be taken out. Now, we are going to be installing a radiator in the front and up the top, both 280 millimeters to be exact. So there's going to be plenty of cooling for the two cards and the CPU. We're also going to be taking out this front section. We will use these pre-existing holes to attach our panel to, so we're not going to be cutting many more holes in the case. Removing that bottom section and also taking out the hard drive bays because we do need that section to fit our radiator down. This is an EK radiator, 280 millimeters, as I said before going to be installing two 140 millimeter fans on the front thermal take ring fans that'll light this front section up nice and bright and give it that rgb effect that the client was after now we're going to be installing our motherboard io panel putting that in place and then we'll get our motherboard in and start screwing that in. Now the design on the motherboard's armor actually looks really good and suits this theme. It has a circuitry sort of feeling to it. So I think we've chosen the right motherboard for this. And we're also going with some Trident Z RGB RAM. As I said, RGB was one of the things that we had to include in this build as per the client's request. We are going to be running with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. And time for the beasts of the system, powering all of those good pixels. We have two GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Strix with EK Wood blocks on them. Going in like so, we will be making a custom backplate and everything for them. So definitely stick around for progress to perhaps even the final video next. Hope you all enjoyed. Remember to check out more videos on the channel, guys. We've got lots of custom PCs, lots of water cooling tutorials, reviews, and much more. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you all in the next one.